I'm Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Today in this video, we're going to talk about how to create shadows for the virtual 3D objects that you place in your scene. So this is actually very easy to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new composite shot. Click OK, and I'm going to bring in my picture, but this will work for a video as well. If I use my mouse wheel, I'll scroll out here, and I'm just going to sort of resize this picture so that it looks fairly good, and then I can rescale to fit so that I have my entire shot here. Now, let me create a three-dimensional object. I'm just going to create a text layer. It doesn't really matter what the three-dimensional object is. In in fact, it could be any three-dimensional object. Since I'm working in HitFilm Express, uh, obviously I'll be a little bit more limited on that, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is take this and make it into a three-dimensional plane. It wants to add a camera, so I'll say, yes, I do want to do that. And I'm just going to move this uh, back in uh, space just a little bit here. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to raise it up so that it's sitting right here so it'll be easy for me to place uh, a um, uh, the floor plane. And you can see that if I'm moving around in my three-dimensional space, I'm going to place that floor plane right on the x-axis at the zero mark. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reset that. And what I want to do is I want to create a new plane. I want to make sure that it's white. Click OK. I'm going to make it three-dimensional. And then I am going to rotate that plane on its x-axis 90 degrees. So now, if you look, you can see that I have this thing sitting right here. What I want to do is place it right next to or right where the text layer is going to be, which is back here. So that way it lines up with the text layer like that okay again if i were to take a look at this you can see that it's sitting right there where i want it to be now if i go ahead and reset the current view and i go ahead and raise this camera up a little bit and i'm just going to sort of um match the angle of the camera which i think is going to be roughly about here maybe to the shot itself and that looks pretty close okay so that plane is going to be what catches the um uh the shadow of my three-dimensional object okay so if i add a new light all right and i take that light and i uh raise it up a bit and i back it up a bit and i bring it over to here you know, you can see that it's affecting the plane, right? Now, here is the deal. I'm going to go ahead and make that plane bigger so that it can catch the entire um, shadow. And then I'm going to do two things to that plane. One is, is I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to go to the blend mode and change the blend mode to multiply, okay? And then the second thing I'm going to do under the material properties is I'm going to untick illuminated, all right? So that way that will catch the shadow but not have any other part of itself uh in the shot so if i get rid of the floor plane and under i'm just going to go ahead and do a search for shadow uh, and that way i can cast shadows from the light and i want the um, text to cast shadows and there it is so now all i have to do is just place the light in the correct position and I should be fairly good to go. Uh, I'm just going to push this to the back and bring it over. Push it way back, and we'll get our so we'll get these shadows sort of lined up with the, uh, you know, with the rest of the shot here, and yeah, something like that maybe. What do you think? Pretty close. Uh huh. Right now, these shadows are not real dark, so I would probably go ahead and increase the shadow opacity, but I might up the shadow diffusion just a little bit to get it to sort of match the, uh, the shot. But basically, that's it in a nutshell. Again, the two secrets. One is on your plane, you're going to set the blend mode to multiply, 
And then two is you're going to, uh, under materials, make sure that that is not illuminated. Okay. It is unilluminated, but it still receives the shadows. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. If you have any feedback or questions about how to place shadows for your 3D objects in your scene, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I'm Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. In today, oh shoot. If you have any comments, oh no, dang it. One more time. If you have any comments, no, not comments, sheesh. One more time. 